Venus is covered in a dense layer of thick cloud, which has been a problem for scientists in the past since it obscures their view of the planet's surface. But instead of preventing us from seeing the surface, these clouds might actually reveal what is going on beneath them on the hot, dimly lit surface of the planet, according to a new study. Scientists have found the weather patterns rippling across the cloud tops are changed by the shape of the terrain below. This means observing the clouds could help us understand the surface of the planet, which has until now been clouded in mystery. Using data from ESA's Venus Express satellite, scientists from Versailles and Göttingen studied the planet's weather. They looked at how quickly winds on Venus circulate, how much water is locked up within the clouds, and how bright these clouds are across the spectrum. These three features are directly linked to what is going on beneath, they found. Our results show that all of these aspects, the winds, the water content, and the cloud composition, are somehow connected to the properties of Venus' surface itself, said Dr. Jean Luperto from the Laboratory of Atmospheres, Milieu, Observations Spatiales in Versailles. We used observations from Venus Express spanning a period of six years, from 2006 to 2012 which allowed us to study the planet's longer-term weather patterns. Venus is very dry compared to Earth, but its atmosphere contains some water in the form of vapor, mostly beneath its cloud layer. Dr. Berto and his colleagues looked at the atmosphere using infrared light, to see how much sunlight was absorbed by the water vapor at different heights above the planet's surface. The researchers found one particular area of cloud, near Venus' equator, hoarded more water vapor than its surroundings. This damp region was located just above a 15,000-foot altitude mountain range called Aphrodite Terra. This phenomenon appeared to be caused air filled with water from the lower atmosphere being forced upwards above the Aphrodite Terra mountains, like a kind of fountain. The researchers nicknamed this feature the Fountain of Aphrodite. This fountain is locked up within a swirl of clouds that were flowing downstream, moving from east to west across Venus said co-author Wojciech Markovich from the Max Planck Institute in Göttingen, Germany. Our first question was, why? Why is all this water locked up in this one spot? He said, at the same time, Venus Express tracked the clouds and their speed using ultraviolet light. Downstream of the fountain turned out to reflect less UV light than elsewhere, and the winds were slower. This is related to a mechanism that affects Venus' atmosphere called atmospheric gravity waves. When winds push their way slowly across the mountainous slopes on the surface they generate something known as gravity waves, said Dr. Berto. Despite the name, these have nothing to do with gravitational waves, which are ripples in space-time, instead, gravity waves are an atmospheric phenomenon we often see in mountainous parts of Earth's surface. Crudely speaking, they form when air ripples over bumpy surfaces. The waves then propagate vertically upwards, growing larger and larger in amplitude until they break just below the cloud top, like sea waves on a shoreline. The wind circulation causes an upwards motion in Venus' atmosphere that carries water-rich air and ultraviolet dark material up from below the cloud tops. It brings it to the surface of the cloud layer and creates both the observed fountain and an extended downwind plume of vapor, the researchers said. We've known for decades that Venus' atmosphere contains a mysterious ultraviolet absorber, but we still don't know its identity, said Dr. Berto. This finding helps us understand a bit more about it and its behavior, for example, that it's produced beneath the cloud tops, and that ultraviolet dark material is forced upwards through Venus' cloud tops by wind circulation. This certainly challenges our current general circulation models, says Hagen Svetem. ESA project scientist for Venus Express. While our models do acknowledge a connection between topography and climate, they don't usually produce persistent weather patterns connected to topographical surface features. This is the first time that this connection has been shown clearly on Venus, it's a major result.